Well, hi everyone. Welcome back to the Sunday video. Now, so today I want to give a quick cliff note of what went on at the FDA Verbat meeting this past Thursday. I was going to stream this, but I was too busy on Thursday, so I tabled this topic uh, for the Sunday video. So we're still seeing this pre-recorded stream. All right, um, and I'll also explain why I am very disappointed with the FDA again and again. So let's get started, right? So the meeting lasted very long, like eight hours. Representatives from the CDC, NIH, Pfizer, Moderna, Novavax presented an overwhelming amount of material, but most of those were not very helpful. And at the end of the meeting, Right, they did a vote. Every advisory committee member voted yes to harmonize the vaccine formulation in the future. It means having one version of the vaccine for everyone, which would best match their circulating variants at the time of the formulation recommendation. All right. So that was the main outcome of that meeting. And here comes the disappointment, all right? Now, by this time, we know that natural immunity plays a very important role in the population immunity against COVID-19. Now, in particular, many people who have received the vaccine, including a booster or maybe two, have also contracted the disease later and gained hybrid immunity. I'm sure a lot of you would know someone in that, in that case, my parents were like that, all right? So these people have the highest level of immunity, you know, that is without a doubt. Now, so I believe many people will ask, so then why the officials still insist on boosting every year? Now, the short version of the typical narrative is that immunity from antibodies weighing over time, an extra booster will further boost the antibody level. This is an old story. This is an old story. Now, Pfizer and Moderna presented antibody data in last year's September Verpat meeting, uh, and I have talked about it at that time. And in this meeting, they presented some similarly disappointing uh, data again. And let's take a look. All right, so uh, here we're looking at their uh, meeting file. So I have all the links in the description box below and you can check it out. Now this particular slide is from uh, Pfizer's uh, presentation and it shows you how the level of antibody changes uh, in participants without or with prior infections. So these people got the BA4-5 vaccines, okay, uh, booster, likely they're Fourth dose. Now notice that well, yeah, there is you know increase in antibodies post the booster. That is without a doubt. But look at people with prior infections. All right, their baseline level were high, were made way higher uh, even before boosting. So boosting more is going to increase more. But what does that increase mean? Right now, again. This is from Moderna. It is showing very similar result. People with prior infections, okay? There is a boost in the after getting the booster, but what does that mean? And even without the booster, that level is pretty high already. Now, an other big catch of these two data that Pfizer and Moderna presented is that these antibody levels were only measured one month after the booster, one month, all right? So one month after the booster. And based on what we know about antibody waning, it's very likely that the level would drop to pre-boost level in six months or so. Now, we are constantly being told that the current goal of the vaccine is to prevent hospitalizations and death and just showing us higher antibody levels have no real meaning in how it helps reduce hospitalizations and death, honestly. Now, when the manufacturers were asked about T cell immunity and how much T cell immunity plays a role in different level of um, defense, all right, they don't have an answer. They just said, well, T cells are being studied. You know, that's the same answer 
in the past two years. They've never presented a single piece of cellular immunity data to the public, right? All the currency、uh, COVID T cell immunity data or studies are from academia or from other other sources, not directly from the manufacturer. It is extremely disappointing that the FDA has been letting the manufacturers off the hook for two years, two whole years. Since the launch of the vaccine, and you may think that well, maybe they were hiding information from us. No, FDA probably don't know because、uh, when the committee members asked the FDA representative, okay, who's that representative? I can show you his face,、uh, but you can look up,、uh, look him up in the video and how he responded. Okay, everything is public here, right? This guy from FDA. All、right, it's a direct quote. It just they, he just said、um, it's too hard to measure anything other than antibodies.、Hmm. It was hard to know T cell contribution at this time, and we don't have the data needed to make a decision. Well, it almost looks like FDA had made no effort to push the industry to do more. Right? I I don't know. I don't understand why. Now, science is not meant to be easy. It is. FDA's job to require manufacturers to do detailed invest investigations, such as looking at、uh, samples taken from the lymph nodes or from other secondary lymphatic tissues to assess cellular immunity. Now, the industry has the resource to do that, considering all the profit they have made from just vaccine alone in the past two years. These study expenses would be a small drop in the bucket. Now, when FDA kept saying, "Well, they don't have the data to make a decision," they should have pushed for that data, right? Instead, they just propose that most healthy people get a COVID booster yearly in the future without the necessary data. I think FDA failed miserably as a gatekeeper in this case. I don't want to speculate why FDA is not pushing, but you probably can think of some reason. And let me put it this way, in another format, and see if you can, you know, guess what I mean. Now, the general population has gained a good level of immunity in the past three years with natural vaccine and combined immunity. This is evident, right? This is evident、uh, by. A much lower hospitalization rate,、uh, and as well as death rate during this winter season compared to prior winter seasons. All right. Now, someone could argue that these the cases were underreported, but hospitalizations and deaths are not likely to be underreported. Instead, they may even be. Overcounted in some cases because most publicly available data does not even differentiate hospitalization for COVID or with COVID due to other sicknesses. Now, indeed, no one can predict how the virus will mutate, but it is showing some early signs of evolution. Uh, Conversion under the Omicron family. We have ha been having some form of Omicron for more than a year now, and well, a lot of people have also gained some level of Omicron immunity in this past whole year. Now, without more data, someone can make argument, right, saying that there is minimal need for healthy people to boost again because their immunity、uh, is strong enough against severe illness. That's the goal. Now, this idea is shared by many experts now, including Dr. Paul Offit, right? Someone on the committee. Now, someone, okay, on an on the flip side, someone can counter argue that well, yearly booster is needed to maintain immunity. Now, when there's not enough data and the second argument is favored, it is obvious that the people who make and sell the vaccine would benefit the most. Do you agree? Well, don't forget. Well, let's look at this article here. Don't forget that the industry has a lot of former FDA employees working for them. This was happening way before the pandemic. This 2018 article 
in science clearly described the problem. It has always been a revolving door between the regulatory agency and someone who make the drug. All right. So to conclude, I think it is、um, very important for us to think deeper about our individual need for disease protection and choose what is best for us. Right. Now, until there are more immunological and clinical data being communicated properly, it is a total disappointment that regulatory agency is not properly regulating an intervention that has been given to billions of people and is proposed to give it yearly again and again. So, why FDA is not pushing for more data from the industry? Is the reason sort of obvious now? Anyway,、um, that is for this week. Well, hope everyone stays healthy, and I'll see you in my next video. Please take care. Bye.